Hello, Beak Squad, David Burns. Good to be with you today. Thanks for joining me here on our live stream. Yay! It's good to be here on Thursday night. Always great to have live stream. One of my most favorite things I'm looking forward to every week is Thursday night. So I hope you feel the same way tonight. We have a great, great show lined up tonight. Wow, I want to welcome you all from all around the country, all around the world. Good to see so many of you in the comment section too. So hope your day's been going good. It's been, um, unfortunately here in Illinois, we had a very, very cold day today. It didn't even make 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was cold and snowy and rainy and cloudy. So it was not any fun at all. <laughs> but it's about to get better. The sun came out. Maybe you can see behind me a little bit. So it is uh, breaking a little bit of clouds up, sunshiny. But it's going to get better tonight now that we're on live stream together. We're excited about what we're going to be doing tonight. I'm going to be uh, having a brief teaching about checkerboarding, a neat way that we can uh, utilize a technique to reduce swarming. And uh, that'd be good if you're not familiar with checkerboarding. I want to kind of talk about that uh, here in just a second. And then after that, I'm bringing in our special guest. Stay tuned. It's Steve Jimenez from Hides for Heroes. Yay, that's great. Uh, it's going to be a fun time talking with Steve in just a little bit. Then we're going to have a Q&A time coming up for all of you to ask questions. And we, of course, we have a giveaway plan. So it's going to be like crazy fun again. Here we go with my uh, daughter-in-law, Leah Burns. Thank you for your donation. Vera, Seth, and I say hi, Papa Nana. So... <laughs> All right, that's great. Hi, Vera. Vera's our, one of our grandchildren, one of our 13 grandchildren. And thank you, Mark, for becoming a member on my YouTube channel. Appreciate that. That's great. All right. So um, listen. Oh, and uh, Jim, thank you for becoming a YouTube uh, member, joining my membership to support my YouTube channel and live stream. I always appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great. So let me tell you, I want to talk a little bit. Let's get right out of the shoot. Let's talk about checkerboarding, okay? Um, I spent some time today drawing up an illustration for checkerboarding. And the hive on the left is what we traditionally would think of coming out of winter. It was, you know, like if you have two deeps down below, they're kind of darker brood frames or, you know, the things you see in brood. And then up above, you have this honey super that's totally full capped over whatever this might be early spring but there you go so what checkerboarding it is it's actually something that walter wright a gentleman uh, no longer with us he passed away in 2016 he was a nasa scientist an engineer and all he wasn't really an entomologist per se he kind of wanted to do beekeeping all on his own and figure things out on his own and so what he came up with was learning and studying about beekeeping and he decided that bee beehives that were coming out of winter facing spring wanting to swarm that they always had ample supply of honey on board before they swarmed and he came up with the idea that as you see on the right side if you could checkerboard now checkerboarding if you ever played checkers you see there's red and black um boxes, squares that are kind of alternating. So this is an alternating way that you would put drawn comb between capped over honey uh, frames. So by checkerboarding, checkerboarding is not checkerboarding the brood area. It's not. It's checkerboarding the honey super above. And while Walter's theory was, and he practiced this and tested it, and it has become one of those things that beekeepers have really adapted pretty heavily um, and, and have accepted, is that if you break up that nice packed honey super above the, the brood nest, then what you're able to do is make the bees feel like they can't swarm because there's too much work to be done above them and the bees feel like, uh-oh, we don't have enough supply above us, so we better wait until we get all that filled up. That's called checkerboarding. So now you can checkerboard. I mean, technically, you could go in and checkerboard the bottom brood box. I've heard people, I've seen YouTube where people talk about checkerboarding the brood area. 
I don't like to do that because if I put, sometimes if I put frame in the middle of drawn uh, brood frames in the, in the brood nest, I mean, you can get by with it, but you need to be an experienced beekeeper because sometimes you're disrupting the queen's pattern. You're disrupting tight brood frames. And so don't confuse that with what checkerboarding actually is. Checkerboarding is all about essential time. You're doing it at the right time of the year. You you do need to, uh, like, like I said, if you have solid honey super above your brood nest area, it's a green light to swarm. And um, the, the hive, they will swarm if they've got that ample supply of honey above them. But checkerboarding reduces it by mixing that up and showing some undrawn foundation above them. Now, no, I'm sorry, drawn foundation above them. I'm thinking in all the research that I've done, most people agree putting undrawn foundation between the honey supers above is not really the best plan. You need to have the bees go to work pretty quickly. So there, you have to have a lot of conditions. You have to have a bunch of drawn honey super frames that are empty of honey to go up in between the ones that are full. So there's a lot of conditions. I recommend if you guys are thinking about doing checkerboarding that you really study it carefully. There's books on it. And if you follow it exactly like landing a plane, if you go by the procedure, then you're going to have a safe landing. But if you just think you know what checkerboarding is and you're not following the protocol, you're not following the timing, I just want to let you know right up front, it, they can still swarm on you. But this is a way that you can increase your honey production and and greatly uh, decrease uh, the swarm potential. But again, a lot of things have to be known. You have to do it 30 days before your first heavy nectar flow. You got to set it up this way 30 days before your heavy nectar flow. Right there, I'm almost out because I never my 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 time's too flexible. I don't know when my first nectar flow is going to start. Is it going to be April the first or April the thirtieth? Right. I don't checkerboard because I can't seem to check off all the things necessary. I may not have drawn honey supers ready to go back on there. Uh, I may, but sometimes I don't. And so you just got to be 30 days ahead of the thing. You got to keep watching and you you can probably put a queen excluder between the, the deeps and those honey, <laughs> honey supers above. So I wanted to rush in here. Kind of always like to share with you guys some teaching, and I wanted to kind of let you know this is what I'm thinking about checkerboarding. I do teach checkerboarding in some of my uh, classes that I teach, workshops on how to do it, but it is it is a little more trickier. It's not as easy. I want to say this: it's not as easy as it sounds to a new beginner, and it's not as easy as it sounds if you're gonna kind of like not respect. The timing, the nectar flow, your available drawn comb that's empty that you can space in between. So keep all that in mind. Wow, that's uh, I, that's really, uh, I like checkerboarding, but I think it just needs to be explained uh, pretty heavily this way. All right. So tonight I'm excited to bring a special guest in with me tonight. He is one of my good friends now since we've spent some time together. I want to bring in Steve Jimenez. Hello, Steve. How you doing? Oh, I don't hear Steve. You're honestly unmute microphone. All right, Steve, can you unmute your microphone? Somewhere can on. You oh, I got you now. Good. Good Look to hear you. Glad to I hear you. I was so excited. All the good things that I said earlier were just, it was pristine. I promise. <laughs> well, Steve, it's great to have you here from Hives for Heroes. I appreciate all the work that you do, buddy. That's great. Good to have a Marine with us. And uh, thank you for your service, of course. And uh, and thank you for what you're doing uh, for the beekeeping community, for our veterans, and for our first responders. That's amazing. And Steve, I'd like for you just... Oh, wait a minute. I got I to gotta tell people. I don't want to jump right into this yet. Hey, <laughs> You and I really had a great time out in Nevada speaking I'm together. Saying. Yeah, that, that was, was a, crazy. That was really good. So I landed at the airport and people were telling me, hey, can you pick up Steve Jimenez? And can you also speak, pick up Dave uh, Tarpey and, and bring him out to where we were? So I we all met up at the airport. We went out for a Mexican restaurant. That was great. Remember that? That was awesome. 
Now, when the waitress told us that it was Margarita National Margarita Day, did you believe her or not? I just, I just think that a hundred percent of the people needed to believe her. That's what I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it she says that. Was, she says that every day. Every day she says it's National Margarita Day. I'm pretty sure she did, but the enchiladas were great. Everything that we had was incredible. And I will say that we got to meet some really good people in a short period of time that we would have never met before. Absolutely. That's that's true. I don't, I don't think I would have met you outside of Nevada, which I really enjoy. As you already know, my heart is in Nevada. Um, with you and Dr. Tarpy and Arkansas, I mean, golly, we are we were really having a good time. Conversations, yeah. Yeah. personalities, and yeah. just really good people. Well, we really did. I, I, I got a, I got a van. I rented a, a, a van to haul us all around, and it's about an hour, hour and a half drive from the airport out to the conference area. So, um, yeah, I drove us back and forth. That was, that was so many great conversations in that Very van. Very good driver, by the way. Just so oh, thank in case you. Anybody didn't understand that. Yeah, great. Thank you. I think I missed one exit, and that was about it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> But well, if, one exit, but three amazing other people in the van. And again, you know, Dr. Tarpy obviously running things in, in North Carolina, doing really, really incredible things. And Arkansas literally running it on his own. We we didn't know that. Yeah. Do you remember that conversation? We didn't know that he was literally doing it on his own. I, I think I know because John, he, you're talking about Dr. John Zvishlock. He and I yes. are good friends. We've been friends a long time. Yeah, he... He single-handedly runs beekeeping in the state of Arkansas. It's incredible. Yeah, literally. It really is, yeah. He does a great it's job. It's such an incredible guy that he wants to continue to train, learn both ends, right? Like, he wants to train people, but also he continuously is learning from everybody else. Oh, yeah. It's very yeah. – and he's such a kind person as well. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I've trained him well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell, it takes us all, right? It like does, it uh, does, it's a village right. when it comes to beekeeping, and yeah. nobody knows everything. But darn, when when it comes down to it, we really do this together. Yeah, the bees do fine. it together. Yeah, we do it together. Oh, By yeah. the way, I love your shirt. Oh, I know. Look at that Heiser Hero shirt. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You know, I actually met you. Remember, we first I actually I've actually met you in person at uh, the Honey Bee Expo in, yeah. in Louisville. So had a great little conversation with you there briefly. That was very fun, actually. And most people did not see that, but it was uh, two people doing um, a really fun conversation with each other. That had yeah, yeah. Gosh, it was so much. It's joy. Like true joy coming back yeah. and forth and going, oh my gosh, I've never met you before. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I've never met you before. How is this going to happen? Yeah. And and came and of course throws a, a really good conference. Obviously the B Expo um, out in Kentucky, Kentucky, huh. I think it is now. Yeah. And it was what four thousand, five thousand people. I think I mean, so. Yeah. I, I I think I quit counting at about fifty people. That's all. I I only <laughs> count to fifty, and I'm like, I'm done. Well, whatever. I can't count that high with those fingers and toes. Yeah, I can't count that big, but it was massive, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, what, about what you're saying, Steve, uh, when we were all together speaking out of that conference, uh, I actually had more time in the van because we were supporting each other. And, yeah. you know, Dr. Dave Tarpey, uh, he's quite a philosopher. I think he even has a degree in philosophy, and I didn't know that about him. And um, he has so much to say on every single doggone subject you about life or anything that, yeah. it, you know, a lot of people may not want, may wonder, what do you, what do speakers do when they're not speaking? Well, <laughs> we sit around and talk about life and just things sometimes not be related. Right. Yeah, and absolutely. It, it's, it's a hoot. And, and that's, it's so great to see the support of each other. And, you know, just sharing our lives and what we do, what we're all about. And that's what you do with Hives for Heroes. So tell us a little bit about what Hives for Heroes is all about, because I think some of my audience may not fully understand it. Yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever fully understand because it it's a human component, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, we're integrating people, nature and technology to make the world a better place. But what that means is people are heavily prevalent on that. And how we do that side is through collaboration. We work with people. We work with organizations. 
And we connect the veterans in their areas to people in their areas. It's very important because that's the physical component. It's the way to go and say, I have a mentor, I have a newbie, we go around a hive and we connect together. It doesn't have to do with Hives for Heroes. It has to do with you mm-hmm. as a person. And it's very powerful to see the, the, the essence of what humanity looks like when we can utilize technology to connect people in nature. Yeah, it, it's, it, it makes me so happy. Like it really okay. does. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I've learned about you, Steve, is that you are uh, an over the chart, out, out, of, out of this world people person. I love that about you. I love that about you. Because when I was uh, in, at the last conference we were at together, I said something like in the nature of like, man, I'd love a, like a little piece of chocolate or some dessert. And you were standing by me and you said, I'll be right back. And then, <laughs> gosh, you came back and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. You came back with this huge dish of chocolate cake and chocolate this and chocolate ice cream. It's just like enough for my whole table to eat. And I was like, wow. That really- was that was incredible. It was amazing. And I really think that one, I didn't take a piece of that, I promise. But it's the willingness to serve. Yeah, you're the willingness to say, yeah. I'm listening. I hear you. I yeah. want a piece of chocolate. That's fine. Let's go over it. Why? Yeah. Because it matters. Because somebody like you might remember it for your entire life. Oh, I will. It makes an impact. Yeah. And these make an impact in all of our lives. Yeah, that's right. right? This one was a chocolate, but man, bees make an impact in all of our lives. Do yeah. they not? Absolutely. Yeah, they do. It was yeah, so yeah. incredible. And yeah. that, that experience by itself was probably... You didn't know this, but there were about eight or 10 people serving that to get to you. Oh, wow. That's great. Wow. That's crazy. Now all of a sudden it blows your mind because people care. Yeah. Yeah. People care. I know. Yeah. That's that's outstanding. Well, you know, Steve, so like I I feel like Hives for Heroes is, is where you take somebody that's a beekeeper and they're willing to mentor another beekeeper that's using honeybees, maybe a first responder, a veteran. They're, they're, they're trying to get over some trauma in their lives, some things that they're struggling with. And so uh, you, you match up a beekeeper that's willing to mentor them, be one-on-one, support them. Is that how it works? Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, we're looking for um, somebody to go to a website to put in their name and trust us. Right. Mm-hmm. To trust us with the ability to connect them with somebody in their local area. Yep. So that can be a mentor connecting with a newbie or a newbie connecting with a mentor. Yep. Why is that important? Because we're both human yep. and it matters. Absolutely. And whether you know something or you don't, the human connection gets us involved around the bees. And the bees are the ones that do the healing. The bees are the ones that do the connection. And we are able to do that through a simple technology platform. That's great. Look what Steve says here. Retired Army here, beekeeper for six years now. Truly a blessing for PTSD. I want to get involved in Hides for Hero. Great job, Steve. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's not Steve. Trust me. There's thousands of people throughout the United States, including the one that's wearing the shirt right now. Yeah. Right? Like you're looking at a mentor, mentor and mentor. This isn't founder and podcast person. This is mentor and mentor working with beekeepers in local areas. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty yeah. of it. There yeah. don't there doesn't need to be titles. Yeah. It's that we care about people. And that's yeah. I mean, how, how can you put a price tag on that? Yeah, I, I I know by spending time with you and always when I talk with you, you are very adamant about separating <laughs> your name and your personality from the organization because you you're such a people person you want to give credit to the team to the the mass number of people that are involved in this and you don't want to sit around and take all the credit yes, that's sir. amazing and so I, I just want to say tonight uh for all of you guys watching tonight appreciate you being on our live stream tonight sherry and i love when you make donations we reinvest every penny that you make normally on our live streams to buy things like microphones or bring in special guests and such and tonight we decided we're going to take all the donations that are coming in tonight 
and we're going to just funnel them right to uh, right to Hives for Heroes. Hives for Heroes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Funnel it right to all the donations that you guys make tonight. And I see some big ones out there tonight, some big donations so uh, out there. Gosh, I mean, little ones count. I'm not saying yes, that, a, you know. Absolutely. A two dollar donation is just as much as a five hundred dollar donation because we're all coming from different perspectives of our our budget and what we can give. But um, it's going to be it's really impactful to see people supporting a cause like this. It's just uh, so I'm I'm humbled and I appreciate it so much. All of you that are doing that, Steve, who does the matching? Like, how, oh how do my you, goodness, yeah, how do you Have match? You not met Charles McMaster. Oh my goodness. Oh, I think I met him one time briefly. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, he might be a retired colonel that just loves doing this. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, I couldn't do it. Charles has the mentality, mindset, drive, dedication, love, and care. I, I'm Amazing. telling you, yeah. he is incredible. And he wakes up, as he says, every day. He did it on the History Channel, by the way. Every day at four o'clock in the morning, waking up to match people in their local areas. Is that right? Wow. I'm, that's a dedication that I cannot, I could not do. That is a team, right? Just like a hive. We all work together, right? Absolutely. That is a special forces guy over there that is doing what he needs to do to make such that's great. an incredible impact. So what if somebody is watching to, tonight and they're like, you know what? I, I want to be a mentor. I want to be a part of this in, in my area. What do they do? Do they, do they go to your website? What, yep. How do they do that? Easy. You made it so easy, right? Go to hivesforheroes.org. You go to the, the join us page, mentor. And by the way, we are always looking for mentors. We have uh, now, this is actually a, a braggadocious piece. We were three to one newbie to mentor. Through all the things that we've been doing over the past couple of years, we are now two to one. Wow. Newbie to mentor. That's huge with 5,000 plus people in the organization wow. every day. That's crazy. So if, if you don't mind, you know, if your, your viewers don't mind, please, if you have three or more years of experience in beekeeping, sign up to be a mentor. There's no cost. There's no anything other than connecting with somebody in your local area. That's amazing. Hopefully it'll be beneficial to you and to them. Absolutely. Great. So they just go to the website. You want them to have three years experience and then uh, they can just sign up and you guys will match them up with somebody in their area. That's, that's, yeah, amazing. we're not going to go like actually, you know, SCI background investigate. Yeah. Right? yeah. We're going to, we're going to take you on your integrity and yeah. we're going to say, okay, you have that. So you can let people into your world. Right. What does it look like for a first year newbie? Scary, confusing, crazy. You Mistakes, built, you don't built know if you're doing it right. Platform on that, right? Yeah, yeah, right. right. What is the success rate for a first year newbie? Not, Not very fair. good. Not very good. <laughs> so if we can just have somebody in their area, just get them through it. Yeah. You don't have to know everything. That's good. You don't have to be an expert. No. Just walk through the journey of beekeeping because that's what it really is. Beekeeping is a journey of our life. It's a journey of us um, learning and, and experiencing things together. Yeah, absolutely. Just do that in your local area. We can do that obviously nationally, but wow, it's so much more impactful neighbor to neighbor. You know, Steve, there's uh, there's so much to be said about uh, this this type of work that Hives for Heroes offers. And I don't fully understand it, you know, as, as you do, but I, I would imagine that when you match up a mentor with a mentee, that what's really the most impactful is just the relationship between those two people. I mean, they could be polishing bowling balls yes. or mowing grass or working a beehive, but the impact is the two of them connecting. It's it's life changing and life saving. It really I, is. I, I tell people all the time, Hives for Heroes is this much about bees. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why that's so important is that we are all over the country. We have channels that we're together. We have Facebook. We have emails. We have all this stuff. Yeah. At the end of the day, when we start traveling, right? When we're going to uh, California, right? We're going to Chico, California, May fourth. 
Why are we going there? Because California Beekeeper and Rowdy Freeman just donated 40 hives, 40 mm-hmm. nukes mm-hmm. to the veterans of those areas. Wow. We're That's not going incredible. there because of the bees. We're going there because we want to spend time with each other and we love each other. And just so happens that they're donating bees. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's really the beautiful is. part. Because at the end of the day, as you already know this, we talked about this in the van. Our mission is to keep guns out of mouths and maybe learn some beekeeping. Yeah. It's not the opposite. It's yeah. very important. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. Uh, our middle son joined the Marines uh, several years ago, uh, did a couple of combat tours overseas. I don't remember now, Afghanistan, Iraq, I don't remember. But Amazing. boy, as, as parents, you know, nail biter uh, yeah. just shakes up your life. And, uh, you know, we didn't even see what he saw. But for us, we were we were just between proud, horrified, terrified proud mixed all together there and uh you know it's it's just uh it's it's hard to for you know i'm i'm not a veteran but i'm trying to think in the eyes of a veteran that coming back home and seeing what my son saw what he went and now that he's back home um just going through what they go through and then trying to come back to whatever you call this normal life uh, that's got to be tough. Got to be really hard. And so I think bees and and this connection of uh, of a mentor is is huge. I think it can be just, and you've seen it firsthand. I'm sure of the impact that it's having. It's amazing. So for, the first thing I would say was thank you for your service as a parent. Thank you for him being there. We've been there. There's a yeah. lot of people on this call that have literally been in his boots, not yeah. in the time, but in the space. Sure. Um, and so thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for supporting us as you have done as well. There's yeah. nothing that can compare to what is going on with him and those that have, you know, on the screen um, been overseas, lost buddies, lost limbs, lost family. The, these things are real, right? Yeah. And what we feel is that the bees are our healing point. Yeah. That's the center of our healing where if I can connect with you, right? I'm a newbie, for example, and I can connect with you, not knowing who you are, not knowing what you did, doesn't matter. Around this nature of bees, it makes the world a better place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I I can't explain it all. I don't think there's science around it yet, but there will be one day because we're going to push it. Yeah. But you and me in a hive make the world a better place, yeah. period. Absolutely. And that happens all over this country, period. Yeah. That's it's great. Amazing. It's it amazing. is amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Well, you know, Steve, it's I, I just enjoyed uh, hanging out with you. And since then, you know, we still talk through texts and emails and all. And uh, there's a connection. We, you and I have a connection, even though we've just, only spent a brief amount of time together. I just feel like we've known each other for 20 years. It's amazing. It's a, it's a, it's a good point. Uh, good people know good people. And I, I can tell you right now when I met you and the stories that we were talking about, especially around the table that we were talking about, which is really, really cool. Um, that was a special group. I don't know if that normally happens. I know. I don't think it does. Like four speakers hanging around a, a table, alone yeah for Dr. the whole week will tell you what do you say like I, I i that's not normal right yeah, yeah that was cool yeah that was really really cool yeah because a lot of times i speak at a conference and you know they they pick you up at the airport they take you to a hotel you hang out in the hotel until it's your time to speak and then they you know kind of carry you to the the place you speak at one o'clock and, and at two o'clock you're back to your hotel you don't really get to know or see anybody at yeah. all but in this environment we actually lived in the close proximity on that table you're talking about, the whole conference is a one room, you know, awesome. they really don't divide up. They don't really, everybody's together the whole time. And I think um, I like that about that. I, oh, I, it was so good. Yeah. Obviously you already know where my heart is at. Right. Yeah. And she'll see it right now because she's watching live. Debbie oh, okay. Gilmore. Yeah. Right? I know. Come I know. on. 
Yeah. You can bring an entire state together yeah. and just have incredible food, incredible place, incredible fellowship just together. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's about. And yeah, no. thank God we didn't actually get like snowed out this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I made it last year. You, you got made snowed it last out. year. <laughs> I made it last year. Yeah. I was one of the few speakers that made it in there, believe it or not. Uh, most people got snowed out, but wow. Yeah, hats off to Debbie and all her work. We talk a lot about that conference, and I don't know why. I go to a lot of conferences and I see a lot of people. And don't get me wrong, I go to a lot of great conferences yes. for sure. Yep. But there is this a uh, special touch to this one that it's hard to shake. It's hard to say that was just a regular conference. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah. I but think anyway, this should increase the prices by a thousandfold and only have 300 tickets and people would buy it. I'd and buy I one. <laughs> I, would. I mean, I would. I know. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just that good. It is. And that it's good. not because yeah. of the frills and the fancies. It's I because know. of the people. Yeah. The people are incredible. Everybody there is incredible. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad we got to connect to each other and I'm glad I got your cell phone number. We text, we hang out, we, we kind of support each other, but um, I'm excited for what I'm seeing uh, happening on our comments. People are leaving uh, donations tonight, Steve, oh, to wow. help hives for heroes. Um, the no all donations are going back to, uh, to support this effort. And it, it is amazing. I'm, I'm in love. I'm in love with bees, but I'm more in love with beekeepers. I, I, as you know, I probably told you, but I, I just use bees to connect with a community of people yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can pour my life into, and I can let them know that I've got their back as much as I can and have time for, I, I'm in it for them. And, uh, it's the beekeeper that excites me to make a video every day. It's a beekeeper that makes me want to teach a class. It's a beekeeper that makes me want to explain checkerboarding. It's a love for beekeeping. It's not a love for checkerboarding. I don't yeah, care anything about you love checkerboarding. Wow. No, I don't like checkerboarding, but I love beekeepers and I I know they're struggling with making splits. So I've I've got to learn something and, and experience it and experiment with it so that I can give it back in an intelligent way and help people that I love. That's my yeah. heart and passion. Anybody can make a video and talk about bees, and I kind of get quite frankly, I can get easily bored of those videos. But when I see a man pour out his heart or his soul or who he really is behind the beekeeping video, yeah. that's refreshing to me. I can tell you, I cannot make a video about bees. We've tried and we just gave up. And what do we say? Collaboration. You guys do this. You guys perform the, the videos, the expertise, all the things that go on and we just want to funnel our people to you guys yeah. to all of those that are in um the areas of this nature yeah. right we're yeah. beekeepers and that's great but we're not we're not video makers we're not experts we're not doctors we want to share all those resources with everybody so they can be successful in their own right yeah. whatever that looks like for them that's what success looks like whether that's for their bees, whether that's for themselves, whether that's for their families or their communities, that's the important piece. So we're going to leave all the expert stuff to you guys <laughs> and we're just going to connect and just yeah. continue to connect. And that's where our influence or power is. It's in caring and connecting. That's yeah. what we want to do. And we'll leave it at that piece. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I got to say when we, we were, kind of fly out of Nevada. What was that a month or so ago? And we had to go back to the hotel to get closer to the airport. We were all, we all had early flights the next morning. Very early. And we went through that uh, gigantic casino hotel slash casino, you know, and I got to tell you, there was a moment there, you know, we were hauling our luggage in and everything. And it was just packed full of every, every kind of scenario of people and different uh, <laughs> motives for being there. There was a time or two that I looked back and you were back there behind me and I was really glad you had my six. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, oh, I feel better that Steve's back there because I, you know, you always kind of want to watch what's behind you, you know? Yeah. And you I got, was like, you got somebody with your back right there. I know. It was, it felt really good that you were back there because it was a little bit insecure for a moment or two, but uh, that's the way it is in beekeeping. You know, we need to have each other's back. Absolutely. It's always great to have a Marine on your back too, right? Absolutely. You <laughs> bet. I, that crossed my mind too. And but I'll say at the same time, you know what? I had your back. You had my front. 
And yeah. oh, this yeah. is what teamwork Absolutely. looks like, right? Yep. And it's it's just beautiful to see what this community can be and continues to explore and engage in, yep. right? Because if you're not engaging in it, by the way, if you're on this channel, if you're not engaging in beekeeping, you're you're isolated. Yeah. Right. In the Marine Corps type sense and in, in what we do on the in Hives for Heroes, isol- depression and isolation are synonymous. And that turns into something not good. That's right. So what we'd yeah. like to do is continue to to gain perspective of each other, work with each other, have a mm-hmm. great conversation. OK, just just being honest. Me and Mr. Burns should have never met. Yeah. Right. We should have never met. The, the world is so large, we should have never met, yeah. but we did, and it's beautiful. It is. Right? We That's met with true. other people, and the thing about bees is they connect us. Yeah. It's not us connecting each other. The bees connect us. I totally it's, agree with that. Yeah. It's beautiful. And what you said earlier, right? You went off on a wonderful rant, and it was all accurate. Hmm. We connect each with each other through them. Yeah, and we support each other through them, and it makes it beautiful because we can eliminate our judgment, our visibility of each other, and then grasp on a specific purpose, yeah. right? It's a purpose yeah. bigger than ourselves, an alignment that is way bigger than any oh, of us can ever do. Yeah, but there are still places that there are leaders at, right? Yeah, that's right. Burns, yep. you still got to lead. It doesn't. Yep. It doesn't mean that you're devoid of leadership. It means that we collectively appreciate something greater than ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Honeybees tell us a lot. I mean, it's almost like they're supernaturally giving us an example of how 40,000, 60,000 individual people slash bees can coexist in one single hive as a single super organism, do their task, respect each other's thing that they're doing that it may be different than what I'm doing. Yes. And we may have a different dad. <laughs> you might be a different Literally. color, different color, whatever, you know, and, but they all just, they know what their purpose is and they support each other. The bees support yep. each other. They, they give us this, this really glimpse into what humanity really should be like. And I, I love that. Um, and I, I, I've said this before that in beekeeping, you know, we have a lot of different people from around the world. So some people may call it God. Some people may call it universe, whatever. But I really do believe, like you're saying, that that we are being nudged along by this higher power to let us see how important it is that we love and support each other with compassion and mercy and kindness and share our our treasure with other people to get them through times that are hard it's just so impactful it's just uh you know we're we're, we you and i talked about this there's a difference between happiness and being fulfilled and and i think i shared with you that (laughs) i'm so fulfilled in serving other people and loving and being compassionate serving other people and beekeeping gives me that outlet it's it's just incredible yeah it takes the it takes the attention off yourself and you have this difference between happiness and joy, right? And in that case, yeah. it's literally biblical, in my per- personal opinion. But you're talking about happiness, which is circumstantial, and joy, which is a choice. And that's yeah. beautiful. But yeah. do you have a choice in a beehive that is rolling all over you? <laughs> you have a choice to be calm. Mm-hmm. You have a choice to, to, to center yourself in the environment. And as you and I both know, you can be aggravated in a beehive and they will be aggravated too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. But when you go in calm, right? And you're and you and you spend the time with them and you work with them and your your breath is different and your your energy is different. Wow, yeah. aren't they? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's 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 also a difference between like trying to control things and trying to let go of control. And control is what I learned in the Marine Corps. Control everything. Control every uh, every every fire team. Every everything that we were going to do was a massive impact. What if I would have just let that fire team do what they did? That's a big. That's a big difference. Yeah, because the bees oh, are going to yeah. do it anyway. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, that's right. It's crazy. Have you wow. ever thought that the bees were going to just like, I don't know, get at you? Like you heard the first hum, right? That first hum. And you go, ooh, corrective behavior. And you calmed yourself down and their yeah. hum went down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, what our life should mimic, in my personal opinion. That, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I was, I was working in a hive uh, two or three days ago. And, you know, after you do it a long time, you I watch the bees and I, I see how they're flying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had my gloves on, but I, I kind of made a sudden movement. It wasn't a really good day. And there's three or four that just instantly came up strong and fast right at my hand. Well, immediately, you know, uh-oh, stop, uh -oh. Slow, slow down, stop. Full stop, you know, and then let's smoke a little bit. Let them see that it's okay. It's, I'll calm down. I'll go a little slower. Sorry that I went too fast. And it was fine after that, you know, but, and it's that way with people. I, I really believe, you know, we have the same opportunity to really see somebody close to us and they might be upset, angry, unkind, but we don't have to respond that way. We can respond in a, in a compassionate, kind way and it will settle them down it will you know and, and how we act how we treat others it comes back to us it's it's yes. amazing and that was wisdom what you just spoke was wisdom that is that is perfect and thank you for sharing that because some people don't realize that just because we work with bees doesn't mean that we're not in the world yeah right we have to be in the world we have oh, yeah. jobs we have friends we have family that yeah. is a perfect that what we tell people is the analogy is from combat or heavy training, right? Not everybody's been in combat to then the beekeeping world is trusting yourself, your gear and your buddies following a known process, finding success and building confidence. Yeah. Wow. That's wow. what we should do with our families. Absolutely. Right. Our kids, our spouses, et cetera. So yeah. you hit it right on the nose. That was boom. You just you just did it. Yeah, that's great. Wow. Well, Steve, we're almost out of time with you tonight. Uh, man, it just seemed like we were here for sixty seconds. What happened? It was amazing. <laughs> well, when we when you spend that much time together in Nevada, okay, <laughs> Nevada, right? By the way, so for all the ladies out there that would have punked me in the head right there, Nevada, what a wonderful place to be. Debbie Gilmore, state leader. Yeah. In, in Nevada, please go. If you have ever seen the Nevada State Beekeeping Conference, don't overload her. She doesn't want to run arena. It is in Urington. It's crazy cool how intimate and close it is. Um, but you might yep. have David Burns be your Uber driver. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. What better life can you have? I know the way. <laughs> oh. All right, Steve. Well, thanks so much for being here tonight. Oh, my Thank gosh. Uh, we're going to continue on with a lot of uh, live stream things, so feel free to stick around. But we're going to put you in the green room. You can help yourself to the donuts and coffee back there if you want to. <laughs> but everybody give a warm applause and a thank you for Steve dropping by. And, Steve, I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you all so much. All right. Wow, that was great. We had Steve. I've been wanting Steve to be on the live stream forever to support Heights for Heroes and uh, got that done. Check that off the bucket list. So uh, that's great to bring in, uh, Steve in tonight. And uh, Steve is a good friend. And as you can see, he has a heart and a passion uh, for what he does. And uh, again, it's not uh, it, Hives for Heroes. It's about all the many thousands of people that are making it happen. It's not all about Steve. He tries to really... Uh, kind of take a back seat and let uh, the credit go to the, all the people that are serving. So I really appreciate that. And uh, just a great guy to hang out with and spend a lot of time with for sure. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you all for the donations. We've got a few minutes left of the live stream. We've got a lot of things to do yet tonight. So feel free to continue to make your donations. All of them are going to Heights for Heroes. That will help them out so much. As you heard Steve say, there's always bees to buy and nukes to buy, things to pay for. As I always say, if you love a mission, it takes it takes money to make that mission happen. No matter if it's a live stream or Heights for Hero, whatever, uh, we can't do what we do for free. It's just we don't live in that economy. If we did, we'd all be doing it for free. But 
everything costs money. And you, you know that. I don't have to explain that to you. That's really great. Let me know uh, something. Uh, I want you to know something that's going to be in store for us next week as well. There is a, uh, a fellow on YouTube that I have really respected his work. It's different than most of the YouTube beekeeping YouTube channels that we're all familiar with. It's a lot different than those. And it's the, the YouTube channel, and you may have seen it, he, he has got 500,000 subscribers, half a million subscribers. He lives in Europe, and his channel is called Just Alex. And he's a beekeeper, and he makes videos on his bees that he works, and he makes other videos about homesteading and hunting for mushrooms and all. If you've never seen his videos, get, get familiar with Just Alex, two words. He's going to be on with us next Thursday night. Isn't that amazing? That's going to be great. He's going to have to stay up late to be with us, but he's willing to do that. And uh, so uh, that'd be a fun time for next week to have just Alex on here as well. But let's get into some important things tonight. I want to ask you guys a question. Oh, wow. We've collected $1,500 tonight for Highs for Heroes. That's amazing. So thank you. That's so far. So thank you guys for your generosity for a great cause. Amazing. It really is. I appreciate that. Um, so let's talk about um, making splits. Uh, here's a question that I get asked over and over and over and over again. And no matter how many times I answer it, it will be asked over and over again. Here it is, right? David, what conditions have to be in place in order for me to make a split? What kind of conditions? What's the temperature? All, the, all these scenarios. How do I know when it's time to make a split? When can I do it, David? So here's what we're going to do tonight. I want you guys to answer that in the comment section right now. Take a moment and put down an answer. Don't write a book because Jessica and Sherry that are working behind the scenes tonight, making it all happen. They're not going to be able to read your book tonight. Try to be brief. Maybe just uh, a, uh, maybe two or three sentences. Describe the conditions that are favorable to give a green light to make a split. Put that in the comments section. All right. And then we're going to start throwing up some of the answers uh, that you guys come up with. I think one of the greatest ways to teach people about beekeeping is to actually force you or encourage, I'm sorry, encourage is a better way to force, encourage you to think through the process. How do I do it? All right. Michael says when you have drones and weather that stays 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Good answer, Michael. I like that. Yeah. When the bees start making swarm cells, Another good indication, right? Because they know better than us do. Here's the here's the good one too. Flow when there's a nectar flow, and the and the hive is full. I love it. Yeah, I love that. Good answers. I've always thought the beak squad, the followers here, are just sharp cookies. Strong hive, warm temperatures. Absolutely, David. You got to have those strong hives and warm temperatures. Cold temperatures aren't going to help much. Yep, above sixty five and drones. Drones, drones, drones. Yep. Strong hive, plenty of resources. You're hitting on all the important factors. Absolutely. When the bees tell you it's time, queen cells present. That's right. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm encouraged. I feel like all the video time that I spend making videos and teaching you guys are, is really showing up here. So I, I'm glad. Maybe you didn't learn it from me, but uh, I'm going to take credit. <laughs> makes me feel better. <laughs> um, one of the things you always need to remember is if you make a split, somebody has to raise a queen unless you buy one. But let's say you're wanting them to raise a queen. So what you need to have is, lots, like you said, lots of drones that are flying, that are mature. And you also need warm weather. The queen's not going to go on a mating flight if it's 49 degrees or 50 degrees. She won't do it. So she's going to have nice weather, nice days to go on a mating flight. So we do need all those things. We need a good nectar flow. We need drones that are mature. We need warm days that the queen can take those mating flights. So really, we need um, the perfect time. Now, here's the dilemma, though. This is why people ask me. People really ask me because they want to know when they can do it before the bees do it. See, that's the issue. The best time to make a split is when the bees want to split. But we want to get ahead of the bees and do it before they split. 
We want to make the split. <laughs> and so, you know, if we don't, if we're not fast enough, we, they, they go off to the trees and we lose the swarm. So that's kind of the tricky part of it. How do we get a, just a, I've always said the best time is to make the split one hour before the bees would have done it. <laughs> that's when you know it's a perfect scenario. It can be a week, it can be a day, but you don't want to wait too long. Time to split when the wife goes or wants to go shopping. <laughs> yeah, I guess you mean that it seems like you're ready to do it, but there's always something else that needs to be done and it's hard to get time to go make that split. That's so true. I got to be honest with you, even as a certified master beekeeper, there are times when I say to myself, "Uh oh, I need to go out there and do these things to these hives out here. But then I say, oh, I don't have time. I'm just going to go ahead and go to that birthday party. <laughs> Hey, people are more important than bees. It takes a lot of work, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay, well, tonight uh, we have a giveaway before we end tonight. We've got about uh, almost uh, eight minutes left tonight. Thank you all for being here. We're going to give away our spring management course that talks about making split. And for those of you that uh, have not received the spring management online beekeeping course, I realize some of you have by purchasing my online courses. So no need to try to win it if you've already got it. And it's no reason to put your name in the uh, hat twice. It won't help you any. But those of you that want to win the spring management online course that I teach, talks about how to make more honey in the spring, splits, all that stuff. Uh, just enter this in the comment section. If you're watching live, if you're watching the replay, it's not going to work. <laughs> But if you're watching live, the, the thing to enter into the comment section is hashtag spring. Hashtag spring. We'll start collecting comments. All right. So there you go. Hashtag spring is the magic word tonight. Uh, because spring is coming, even though here I, I talked to my friend John in Arkansas and he was uh, bragging and making me feel bad about how nice it is down in Arkansas today. It was crazy, but uh, it's been cold up here. Mm -mm -mm. But we're going to start uh, taking these, um, collecting these comments tonight. If you want to win the spring class, there you go. Wow. Um, also, I. Uh, just want to thank you guys again for supporting Hives for Heroes tonight and giving Sherry and I an opportunity to use our live stream to support the beekeeping community, those that are doing great work like Hives for Heroes, and then uh, making those donations tonight. And um, Sherry and I are covering the YouTube part of the donation that, that sometimes gets taken out, always gets taken out by YouTube or um, other things like credit card fees or whatever, because you can donate on our website as well at honeybeesonline.com. If you're watching and you're not sure, like, how do I make a donation on, on my live stream here? If you don't know, just go to honeybeesonline.com and look for Hides for Heroes on our website. There's a place to donate there and we'll gather that donation up and send it off as well. So that'll help you all. But I, I want to just, Sherry and I personally want to thank you guys for, for doing that, giving us an opportunity as well. All right, let's go ahead and draw the winner of tonight's spring online spring management course. Who will it be? Wow. All right. It's slowing down. We're excited. Look at these names. Craig Wolf. There you go, Craig. You're the winner. Be sure to email us within 24 hours at longlanehoneybees at gmail.com. Don't wait past 24 hours or we can't figure out who you were. <laughs> so get right on that, send an email right off. So they'll be sure and send that class to you as soon as possible. That's exciting. Wow. Absolutely. Let me go through my checklist. We did a lot. We covered a lot tonight. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. Um, I guess we've got uh, just about three minutes where I'll be happy to take any last minute questions that some of you may want to be asking tonight. How will the bee bees behave during the upcoming eclipse? I've got it figured out. Really, I don't have to do a study. When it gets dark, bees go back to the hive. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I kind of think that they might still be able to know the orientation of the sun. And though it gets dark, they might want to go back to the hive or they may want to stay, stay out because they might be able to still fly enough. And where it's totally uh, the eclipse is, uh, is the most 
um, there's a lot going to be a lot of studies done. So not sure, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. What are the kind of questions tonight? George, what should you do after installing a package on drawn comb? After two weeks, you do not see eggs are your queen. Just order another queen. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, George, this is a tough thing because what could have happened if you failed to notice it, they could have raised a queen from the egg that the queen may have laid early on and they, that, that queen cell may have gotten broken down by now. You don't see a queen cell. You don't see a queen. You, you know, there's a mating going on. She may be on a mating flight. You buy a queen, put it in there. They're going to kill your new queen. But honestly, I would gamble. I would get a new queen and put it in there. If the virgin queen or her project or her uh sisters kill it well then you're still going to be queen right blaine there's a smell coming from my hive pollen has been coming in for two weeks now and uh, i have b i've been in the hive many times and it looks great can lots of spring pollen have a smell here's what happens for me sometimes is that if i have a real good run on asters like goldenrod in the fall the bees open that back up as a resource in the spring. And I have smelt goldenrod that smells kind of like dirty socks. I don't know. It just has a funny smell to it. I've smelt it in the spring so many times in the spring. And I'm like, goldenrod, oh, it's in the honey. And they're opening the honeys up to eat it because they're getting down to their last resources. Otherwise, I would look at my brood and make sure that you don't see any perforation holes in your brood. Uh, you, you want to be concerned about American fowl brood with any smell, but that's usually, um, I, I mean, it can happen, but just check your brood. Make sure you don't see uh, open uh, little holes in your brood. That could might mean American fowl brood. Yep. Andy, how far apart should I have my two hives if I'm starting them from packages? Oh, Andy, this is a tough one. If you put them right close to each other at the same time that uh, the hives get orientated to their new location, I've had it where a package will totally abscond and go into the other box and you lose the queen, right? Because they just get confused. If there's any way that you could make one face a different direction than the other, that's going to help a bit. But if you can separate them, that's even better. It really is. Um, I would probably be tempted to move them about 10 or 20 feet apart make them face different directions, and then slowly over the course of a few weeks, move them six inches a day back to where you want them. Don't move them too much or they'll get confused, but slowly move them back into position. Good question on that one. Yeah. Hey, Dave, do you install a nuke right away or wait a few days? You can do either one. I've done both. It works fine. Most of us like to let them, you know, pick them up, let them stay really close to the hive. You're going to put them in like either on top of it, right in front of it. So they'll take, if they take orientation flights, they know where they live and then let them stay overnight. And then you can install them the next afternoon. It works pretty good kind of to wait like that it really does. Hello, EL. Nice to see you uh, here again tonight. If you find a cage, a queen, oh, if you find and cage a queen in a hive, how long does she have to be removed before you introduce a new queen? If you find and cage a queen in a hive, how long does she have to be removed before you introduce a new queen? Uh, yeah, you need to probably take her out of the hive at least four hours before you introduce a new one. And history and old literature of long time belief is that you should wait 24 hours. Take the queen out, wait 24 hours, introduce a new one. I've had real good success waiting a day. Half a day is fine too, though. Doesn't take long. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I tell you what, it's eight o'clock. It is time for us to say thank you all for being here tonight. It has been my pleasure to host uh, this live stream. Thank you all for being here. Outstanding uh, job on supporting Heights for Heroes tonight. Thank you, Jessica and Sherry, for uh, all the things that you've done uh, tonight. We had so many donations, so many of you. Sometimes Sherry or Jessica will put uh, names of people that donated tonight up on the screen, but I know tonight there's probably so many, too many for our banner to hold <laughs> to show that. But just let, just be known, just know it that we love you guys for donating and just whether it was a, a donating a comment or donating money or support or whatever. It meant a lot that you guys were on here to support 
over eighteen hundred dollars tonight so far. We didn't even we haven't counted up what was donated on the website. So, wow, that's incredible. Great to be a part of something like this for sure. So let me just say I've been making a lot of videos on swarming, what to do with swarm cells. If you haven't had a chance to drop by my website or my YouTube channel and look at these uh, new videos. I think they'll be really helpful for those of you maybe coming out of winter for the first time. You don't know what to do. Check that out. If you're new to beekeeping and you're getting your package or nuke this year, you're not sure how to inspect your hive. The last couple of videos I've made really show in depth how to handle frames, how to look and move about the hive really good. Those would be great videos for you guys to watch. It really will be. It's been my pleasure to be with all of you tonight. I can't say thank you enough. I'm going to say good night. Thank you all for being here and uh, love you guys. Appreciate it so much. Have a good evening. See you next time.